up and then he can he can send the link out to everyone. We are live. I'm five nine. Should I do pinpoint stands or platform stands? What do you think? For me, I always went for pinpoint. For me, I always went for platform. So I think I think with pinpoint it depends, yeah. depends on the player, doesn't it? Yeah, it's what you're more, most comfortable with. I think if I was, I don't know, it's, it's a difficult one. A lot of good players use the platform too. So um, again, a lot of questions. So pinpoint or platform? Try out both. See which one works better for you. I say with a with a pinpoint, you'd get uh, you can get a lot further in the court into the court. Yeah, you can get further distance up and forward. So I think if you were to look for more power, I'd say use the pinpoint. Um, I say the platform you can use, but only if you if you're very good at uh, putting your hip out and you've got a very good flexibility in your on the left side. The left side. So you really need to yeah. drive that left arm up and hold it as high as you can. Um, to get a little bit of extra power out of that, um, so yeah, but definitely try out both. Uh, but the pinpoint, I'd say, would be the the more, the, powerful, the, the more powerful, easier option. For me, platform always gives me more spin on the second serve. So play around with both. Um, forehand, some people I know advocate. A wrist snap for power. What are your opinions on this? Wrist snap. You. I do mean, you think they mean at contact point. Do you, yeah. Wrist, do, do you mean the contact point or wrist snap? contact. Or, 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 or you're talking about uh, the the lag of the racket. So yes, you do need to have the racket lagging behind your wrist before you hit the shot, and then you're going to drive through. Uh, but I wouldn't say it, you'd, snapping you'd be the wrist snapping the wrist at contact because then you would lose. This Control it, go more to the left, and you need to make sure that the ball uh, it goes straight through. So you, your your path has to be a straight one through the ball, through the contact. Peter, we're trying to get Peter to join as well. So Peter, if he's still awake, if he's still online, he'll join in as well. Out of water. I'll give you some questions. So, up. guys, any other any other questions that you may have? Um, I hope we. Uh... Uh, do you guys play another sports for fun? Um, well, at the moment, actually, we get very little time for um, anything for for other sports. Um, but uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I quite I quite like to play football. Um, Me too. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Football, basketball. I like basketball. Golf. I'm terrible at golf. Um, I try. I try. Yeah. I'm all right on the golf on the range, so I, I can hit it. But uh, on the on the on the course, I think I shouldn't be allowed on. <laughs> I've, I've learned go, golf the last two years. I think I'm getting ready for the. Uh, Circuit. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. How do you guys deal in a tight, close match? For me, lots of deep breathing, lots of bouncing around, so you basically stay light on your feet. Positive thoughts. Try anything negative, basically put it out of your mind straight away. Yeah, try and think. Uh, for me, it's more like try and focus on the on the process rather than the outcome. So, if you start feeling that you're starting to think about the outcome, where you're thinking about winning or losing the match, where you're thinking about what's going to happen in the future, that's when it may cause you to uh, become even tighter. So, if you want to uh, stay relaxed, focus on your on your feet, as Simon says, on your breathing, um, and, and and maybe roll back onto the tactics that you've decided 
to play before the match or you've, you, you're, you're thinking about playing. Um, so you should constantly also be evolving with the, with the opponent. Um, so if you, uh, if you do that, I think that'll help you to stay a bit more relaxed. Who is your favorite tennis player? Mine, when I was growing up, was always Pete Sampras. I had, uh, I had yeah. his poster hang Same on the wall. Um, at one point, I, um, when I was younger, I had a hit with Tim Hemman, and, uh, and I really loved it, and the fact that he played with me. And so he was, uh, he was my favorite player for a while, and I tried to, um, to uh, uh, kind of copy his game a little bit when I played. Who are your favorite players in the ATP and WTA tours? ATP right now, I like Djokovic a lot. Um, everything about his game obviously he's number one Federer and Nadal I like all the big three guys yeah I used to I used to train quite a lot with Murray when uh, when I was playing um, so I uh, kind of like watching him play uh, makes me feel like hey you know I was I, I could maybe still play if I uh, if I was uh, if I was training fully so it was uh, it's good to watch someone that you, you, you you've been growing up with and played with a lot and WTA I like Whatever people say about her, I like Williams. She plays Serena. She plays solid game. And next question. <laughs> <laughs> um, strings, rackets and strings. Oh, rackets and strings. So at the moment I'm using uh, Babolat rackets. Uh, so I've been with Babolat for many years now. So it's, uh, I've been, they've been really good to me. Uh, stayed loyal even when I had injuries and uh, when I uh, was going through tough times, they uh, they always uh, were behind me, which I'm always grateful for. So I've I've been using their rackets uh, and their string, so the Babolat RPM Blast string. Before that, I used to play with uh, Signum uh, Polyplasma. That was a great string. So if you if you're after a soft polyester string, it gives you the same kind of I don't know. I, contact and, and feel as a maybe like a big banger uh alley power luxon alley power then that's the kind of cheaper option but it's uh, just as good i found what about you i play with prince right now but um my favorite racket was always the wilson pro staff but it's so stiff you can't really coach with it and i used to use really fat polyester strings when I was playing on tour because they last long um, and it was cheaper <laughs> but now I use something called Black Widow which is just cheap version of basically Big Banger I like your video guys any tips on improving one's timing watch the ball but it's not working track the ball from the racket of your opponent. So basically when your opponent hits the ball, track a ball all the way. So watch the ball coming towards you and that will send the signals to your brain to prepare earlier. Prince XO3, yeah, you used the Prince yeah. XO3, right? Yeah. Rebel. Get on my feet old racket. How do you hide a weakness? You improve your weakness. <laughs> you improve your weakness and you, you try always and, have to improve and, it. and you use your strength so they can't yeah. find your weakness. So I'd say my forehand was always the, the strength, so it was stronger than my backhand. So I used to uh, go into a match with the mentality of uh, I'm going to hit as many forehands as I can uh, into the player's weakness. So if, if they're, weak, they're, they're weak on their backhand, I want to uh, use my strength to hit into their, to their weakness. Um, so you do it with your strength. High backhand, you can uh, you can slice. slice. So keeping a ball low or, or getting the ball back up high, Move uh, ball then. you know that's that's also another option if you wanted to uh, if you're uncomfortable with that high backhand, that would be a that would be an option for sure. Or go back. Do you consider that the new pro staff is too heavy for the club play, even if fit? Um, I mean, I think too heavy. Yeah, tough. 
Yeah, if it, it depends on your style of play. If, yeah. you, if you consider yourself to be a, a whippy, um, if, you, if, you're, if you've got a whippy style of play where you're playing a lot of topspin or um, you, you come to the net a lot, you need to maneuver the racket, I'd say you use a slightly lighter one. If you're a powerful baseline, a lot of them use heavy rackets. I think um, Federer he uses quite a heavy one. Murray uh, uses wow, a heavy racket. It also depends on that where the, the weight is distributed. So if it's in the top of the racket, uh, it flies through there quicker. I think if you're serving volley or you come to the net a lot, it's good to have it in a handle so you can move the top of the racket around. Um, so, yeah. David wants to know how to hit with people who hit harder than you. You basically have to speed up your footwork so you get into the right position faster, earlier. Um, and uh, I'd, say, I'd say you have to also make sure that those people don't get those easy balls to hit against you. So if you can keep the ball quite low, um, you're possibly using slice or you can keep it higher or, well, basically you're trying to get it out, out of their hitting zone so they don't, they don't have the chance to hit hard at you because obviously if that's their game, anything you can do to disturb that would uh, work in your favor. For the doubles, when you go down the line, I would say when the guy starts crossing, you start going line just to keep him guessing. Yeah, I think it's actually quite useful. Like when I, when, useful I, when I played, uh, actually when I played against the Bryans uh, at Wimbledon, uh, something that I found is they go down the line quite a lot. Um, and Throw you it, off. I mean, if you hit it hard and you hit it well, um, what better way to, to, to scare your opponent and, and actually you almost make them not want to hit volleys. So yeah. otherwise they're always looking to cross. And if you hit it hard down the line, that stops that immediately. And if you hit it hard down the line, it makes them wish that you don't go there. So when they're standing there and their partner's serving, they're kind of a little scared. And it's always a good uh, message to send out, especially early in the match. Quite funny watching yourself like yeah. <laughs> What's your worst opponent, guys? Someone you hate playing? Here we go, we're getting some more viewers now. Starting to rise. <laughs> it's starting to rise. I don't think we're sleeping tonight. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, it's a good feeling when you go down the line and they poach, but also even if they don't, you still want to you still want to hit it there to, to show them that you're not scared of hitting it there. Yeah, I, uh, I stream my own rackets. I've uh, been doing it all my life. I almost don't even trust the, the stringer to string it exactly the same way as I do. So I always, uh, I always stream my own. Um, I remember actually one year when I played at Wimbledon and I got one of their stringers to string it. Uh, and it felt so tight. It felt completely different to uh, to how I play it, and I actually ended up not using it. So a lot of the times I string it, but also at tournaments because it's tough to always have a stringer with you. So you do give it to the tournament stringer. Uh, but uh, I usually do it at practice. So after practice, I'll get it restrung so I can see exactly what kind of tension a stringer comes out at because every machine's different, every string is different. Uh, hopefully they don't cheat by double stringing each string. Um, like double pulling when you don't pull each string individually and you actually do two at a time then it reduces the tension so if you want to stop all that happening I guess the best way is to do it yourself how did you guys meet um, we actually met a long time ago we when, went on the tour didn't we yeah when, I, when, the day. Yeah, when we were playing um, futures in I think I remember uh, Portugal yeah in Portugal I saw you yeah, yeah. I mean, we could because we're from the same town, from same uh, same, uh, same part city. of London, same city. We play the same tournaments, so you get to see each other quite a bit. If you play Serena Williams now, three sets, what's the final score? 
Uh, I think she'd probably get maybe a game in a set. I say one and one to me. I'm confident. <laughs> I mean, I've played a, I've played a few girls, and then, yeah. you know, I mean, I was playing at the time, so now maybe I'm not playing as often. A little bit but I'd say, I'd say maybe she'd get me cold in the first set. Maybe I'd I'd win six two or six three, and then I'd win six one or six love in the second because I'd get warmed up. <laughs> What was your worst loss ever? Uh, oh, I've got one. I um, I played a match in um, Czech Republic and I turned up and it was clay courts and I was seeded. I was actually number five seed in the tournament. And the first round I was playing a guy called um, Chermak. He was at the time number five in the world in doubles. Okay. And he was a complete doubles player. He didn't play much singles. Um, and uh, he turned up and he was playing i mean literally every ball was just flying past me whatever i did he was winning and it, i think i looked at the there was a stop stop watch on the on the on the court and uh, it was uh, i was five love down within the first 14 minutes wow yeah and i thought oh my god this is going to be the quickest loss in my of my life and i ended up like playing or like, like fighting like crazy and i was actually playing quite well he was just so volleying and putting every ball away and uh, I ended up losing something like six one, six two, or something. But it, it was a very quick match, and I uh, I hated the fact that I lost so easily. But uh, he almost didn't even let me play. Uh, that can happen with someone who has a uh, quite a big game. I played a match in Bulgaria, 2010. Played a guy from Davis Cup team. I qualified three rounds qualifying, and then first round main draw. They put me on the show court against the local Bulgarian hero. I'm half Bulgarian as well, so knew a few people, but most guys cheering for them. And um, I lost 6-1, 6-2, or 6-2, 6-1 in about 55 minutes because the guy hit everything so flat, gave me no timing. And the day before I played a match where the guy was a moon baller, so it went from one extreme to the other extreme, that was pretty embarrassing. Uh, do you guys still play on a tour? If not, why not? Uh, well, no, we don't play anymore. Um, I stopped last year, about a year and a bit ago. I uh, played my last summer. My knee was hurting. I had two knee operations. I actually got injured at Wimbledon. Uh, and I, I I had comebacks after comeback after comeback. And uh, when you come out of playing for a long time, it, it really takes it out of you. So when you do come back, it's... Uh, it's a lot tougher, so you have to work extra hard. And when you've done the comebacks two or three times, you you start to question whether you've got it in you to to keep doing it. And uh, and finance finances came into play where I had to decide whether you know I keep pl plugging away at the tour or I actually go and and, and make some money and, and 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 settle down for a normal life. And that's what I kind of had to do a little bit because of my injuries. And you, Simon? Me, I stopped 2007. I played a bit after that just for fun, more or less. But 2007, I stopped because financially it was impossible for me to carry on. Um, I was doing pretty well at the time. I started beating guys 500, 400, and I was getting better. But I was still nowhere near where I wanted to be. But I had to uh, give up financially. And since then, I've been coaching full time. What's the orange yellow drink? Ah, oh, uh, well, actually, a lot of the Spanish they use this, they use the same, they use the they same, same drink. One, yeah. There's one drink that they all use, but I can't remember the name of it. Uh, but it's very popular among all the players. Yeah, you can get it in any big shop. Yeah, it's like a, it has an isotonic, a, isotonic uh, mix powder uh, with uh, electrolytes in it uh, and some energy stuff, maybe caffeine as well. I would end the call soon. After you lose a match, what do you think about to get better? Analyze what went wrong, what happened. Start.
All right, come back. We'll do some more. Just how fast do the male tour pro male tour pros hit the ball on average during the course of a match? Plus fast. seventy-five miles an hour. I mean, it's tough to know uh, the exact um, speed. Speed. Obviously, I don't have a speed, a speed gun. gun, you know, in my head. But a lot of the the good some, players they hit it hard. Some of them actually don't hit it as hard as you think. Like Mario, I don't think hits it hard. A lot he, he can hit it hard because in practice he can really unleash and it's really tough to play him uh, but he um, in matches a lot of the time he chooses to outsmart you he, he makes it uncomfortable for you to hit and then he'll deliver the killer blow yeah I think a lot of people watch tennis on TV from the above you and they actually think the top guys hit it harder than they actually do when you watch them in person they hit maybe 60-70% of their full power in most points and you see club uh, guys trying to whack the head out of the ball when there's no reason to. Opinion on Prince Rackets. The older ones I think are the best. The ones with real graphite. The ones these days that are kind of making the string bed too uh, big and you lose control like that. That's just my opinion. Uh, what do you think about 18, 20, 16, 19? Well, eight, the more strings you have in a racket, the, the, the more dead it will feel, I guess. For me, that's how I found it. it gives you more control. You, yeah. you can definitely, you know, hit the ball. I'd say, uh, for me, the more, like, something like a, a, a prestige, head prestige, the way it has a, a really tight string yeah. pattern, I, I always felt a little bit too stiff. Like, it didn't... I, I the control is strong on that, though, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, control is good. So... I'd say if you want spin, I'd say you use less strings and more power will comes from less strings. So the 16, 19 would be more powerful than 18, 20 is what I find. But again, it all depends on your string tensions too. So if you string a tight racket, it'll feel a lot tighter on an 18, 20 than on a 16, 19. Do you think Federer will win one more Grand Slam before he retires? I think so. Yeah, I think so. I think he's got... I mean, he's, Wimbledon this year, possibly? He's, he's having a... He's, you know, he's, he's coming back. He's coming he's back. He's, yeah, he's changed his game. He's, he's coming to the net a lot more. He's keeping Short the point shorter. The yeah. uh, and I think he, he, he looks like he still has the hunger to, to do it. So I yeah. think there's a, there's a big chance he will. Vancouver always raining to play tennis outside. Same as London. We <laughs> need indoor courts, indoor centers. <laughs> Any questions on style of play that you need help with? <laughs> nope. Do you believe in good return from Del Potro? In good return from Del Potro? Oh, I think so. Yeah, because he's got such a big game. I mean, he he's just needs. He, he's got powerful game. He just needs to sort out his body so his wrists are uh, are better. Uh, and uh, and yeah, I think they, the, the crazy thing about that whole thing with Del Potro, they said it had nothing to do with his grip on the left hand, but if you look at it, it's come back straight after surgery. So yes. What do you need? No. Close it down. Just for today. But I think you'll get I think the Potter will come back strong and I think he'll he'll Do you believe in oh, what do you who do you think the goat is? The greatest of all time. Uh Sampras is definitely one of them. Sampras being my favorite player as well. Yeah. So but I'd have to say Federer, I guess. Yeah. You know, Federer he's just an all rounder and but the then, numbers. Then it comes into Nadal's head to head against him. I think it's all, all it's depends so, on the era as well. So, yeah. you know, who's the I greatest of the era? 
yeah. And it's, to say one flow is the best of all time, it's probably impossible. I see sponsorship with Babel Up. Can you explain what happened? Oh, I mean, yeah, Babel Up, from a young age, they were giving me free clothing and, and, and rackets. And uh, well, at one point, I had a deal where they would give a bonus for if depending on how well I do in the tournament. Obviously, the better you get, the more bonus you'll get, and then you can... Um, ask for a guarantee where it's uh, they pay you a, a set amount per year and, and things like that. But uh, you really have to aim high to to start receiving good contracts because for a company that's big, you know they really need to see some returns. Yeah. Kirtin, I actually love the way he used to play. Yeah, I love Gustavo. Yeah, he is he, he's very whippy and he's so relaxed and. Uh, I love yeah, watching. I, I loved watching. Watch, I loved watching him yeah. play. And when I was growing up, I actually tried to model some of my shots on him too. Yeah. Staying low is important. Do you have to stay all the way through or can you lift up? You can definitely lift up. It just depends a shot. If you're hitting a higher ball, you jump into it sometimes. If it's a low ball, like a slice, you probably want to stay low the whole time. Who's your favorite female player of all time? Uh, for me, probably Steffi Graf. Alex? Yeah, I'd say. Uh, i trying to think. Who wins between the two of you in tennis? Alex with his right hand, Simon with my left hand. <laughs> 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 the fact is that it's a particular code. Huh? Do you think helped you guys to get so good at tennis? Uh, I would, for me, I'd say it's a combination of all of them because, uh, like, parents are, first of all, your parents are the ones who put you into tennis. The parents are the ones who... Uh, inspire you to play first of all and the, yeah. and the support from them means a lot so it, it helps you develop but definitely a coach is something that uh, you know you need, you need good advice especially from a young age to uh, to make sure you set all the um, you know all the, all the groundwork properly all the fundamental things that you have you know because then that's when you start to develop and you can build on and I think for anybody out there it all comes up to yourself more or less your parents can push you you can have a great coach you can have money but if you don't want it yourself you're not going to improve does simon have contracts with nike i wish if anyone is from nike and you want to sponsor us yeah. feel free to get in touch We wanted to ask you guys actually what what would you like to see more videos on? Like, yeah. what do you enjoy watching on our channel? Like, do you do you subscribe to our website? Um, do you uh, do you get our courses? Uh, do you prefer to see videos and uh, like the tactics videos that we do, or the what happens next videos, or the tales from the tour videos, which we actually filmed quite a few of recently so you will uh, you'll be able to uh, listen to some of the funny stories and some crazy stories that we've had while playing uh, so yeah just give us your thoughts on uh, what it is that you like to uh, to see a bit more of I believe I've hit a tennis wall two years of solid playing advice send uh, some videos of yourself playing we can take a look at it probably something technical um, Send us some videos. You yeah. don't have to put them on public. You can make it private or hidden and send us the link. We'll take a look and see if we can help you out. I think also a lot of the time it could be to do with your training. fitness as well. So yeah. training regimes, fitness, and whether you're working on the right thing. So you know maybe if you're just hitting with players and you're not working on specific things, it's going to be difficult for you to improve. You're going to be always maintaining but a good player to improve, you need to work on specifics. So whether it is, you know, getting your consistency higher, whether it's getting your placement better, whether it's getting your power uh, stronger, you know, so it's, you can always work and you can always improve those things, but unless you make a mental conscious effort that yes, I'm working on this thing today, uh, it's not going to improve because you'll just end up rallying and hitting and maybe yeah. becoming slightly better match player because you're, you're playing matches, but you won't necessarily improve your skills as a tennis player. I'd like to see more different types of drilling videos. I love your future tennis serve video. We've got part two coming out in a couple of days. Yeah, that. Uh, how to do it? How yeah. to do the future tennis serve? 
I would like to see more training with former ATP Pro. Okay. Good ideas, guys. I like it. Yeah, we'll definitely do some of that. Yeah. Oh, someone knows a representative with Nike. Okay, well, you know, send them give our us, way. Give us, send us the details. <laughs> <laughs> Can you remember when you first thought you were a special player? Um, I've never thought I was special. Yeah. What about no. you, Alex? No. No. I mean, I always felt no. there was so many people better than me, so I always felt like I was catching up to people. Yeah. I. I mean, it, I. I felt like I was special because I was prepared to work hard. You know. Yeah. So a lot of the guys. A bit lazy. Were, you know, weren't necessarily putting in the hours. I was, I was always ready to work. You know, and sometimes it takes a good coach to tell you what to work on. And I think that's that was important for me. Uh, I spent a lot of time in Spain, and I had a few good coaches along the way who guided me uh, into in, into you know going the right way. And I think there was a few times in my career where I didn't have a coach uh, working with me, and that's when I think I needed a bit of guidance, and maybe that's why I got injured. Where can I send the video of me playing for you to see? Top tennis training at hotmail.co.uk. That's our email address. Uh, Erwin gets so nervous. He wants to know how to deal with extreme nerves. If he's getting nervous in matches, I would say he just has to keep playing matches because that's the only way you're going to get used to being nervous. Everyone gets nervous. Alex gets nervous when he plays. Yeah. I get nervous when I'm playing. You just have to learn how to deal with it. I think I think one of the main things Come when you do get nervous is to still kind of try and play through it. Yeah. So try and not let yourself freeze up and, and again, focusing on the process rather than the outcome and, and, and swinging through the ball because the tighter you get, the, the more uh, power you want to get give to the ball and the tougher it is to hit it. Yeah, easy, easy points, easy power comes from a loose arm, from loose hips, loose legs. So you want to you want to try and think about that when you're playing. I would like to see more tactic videos. The draw wall videos are really fun. Keep it up. And I'd also like to see that, that match. Okay, hundred percent against each other. Before the match, I'm gonna. Kick Alex in the kneecap so he's a little bit injured. <laughs> you don't need to do that. My, knee, my knees are not great already. <laughs> You've got me on this one, buddy. How often should I play a week? And well, how long each time? It depends what you want from yeah. your tennis. I'd say the longer you, the more you play, the better you'll get. Obviously, yeah. then you'll come. There'll come a time where you have to think about injuries. You know, so if you overplay, you get injured. But I think if you want to push yourself to get good, you have to play a lot of hours. And I'd say. Pros generally, they probably play around 20 hours a week at least, and then fitness on top of that. So you need at least two, three hours a day uh, and fitness. When you go to academies, uh, you usually play about four hours a day uh, yeah. and you have an hour of fitness, something like that on average. So you do a, a two-hour session in the morning and a two-hour two session in the afternoon. So that's that, And that's quite a normal kind of set routine. day routine. So I love summoning back and how to hit turn it back and I can't wait to try out tomorrow. Thank you. I'm still uh, learning and perfecting my two-hander, so it's <laughs> not ready for release just yet. What do I have to do with myself still touching the net? Leg drive. Uh, and contact point contact higher. Point. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, you need to reach up to the ball as much as you can and, and use your legs to drive up. How can you avoid injuries? Stretching before, well, dynamic warm-ups, very important. So you warm up properly and you need yeah. like at least 20 to 30 minutes to warm up, to run around, to get your body... Uh, you know, the ready joints, for yeah, everything. The everything, tendons, everything so warmed up. You elevate your 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 heart rate. You know, you you get warm, um, and 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 get your your muscles ready for for, for the strains of a, of a point. Also, to cool down as well. Cool down, so as well. cool down and stretch after the after the match. After the, every time you play, I gym think training as well. Exactly. So you In need the to gym, uh, like rehab kind of, yeah. or, or injury prevention. Things that you can do, maybe if you're injuring the, the your bands. shoulder, you'd use the bands a lot more. Resistance bands. So it's not always sometimes when you do get injured, what do I do? It's, it's how can I prevent myself getting injured? Yeah. So if you if you do the, the preventative exercises, then you shouldn't be getting injured. Unless it's a technical thing, then you need to look at it. A, 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 you can analyze your technique. For the working out your non-hitting arm, for me, I work out both arms the yeah. same. Yeah. But I coach quite a lot left-handed as well. So I'm... I basically coach the players who are strong, who I coach, I play right-handed, and the players who are a little bit weaker, 
and I'll coach them left-handed, so I basically try and keep my body balanced that way. Alex is also learning how to do it. I'm trying hard, but <laughs> it's so trying. tough. So <laughs> me and my right arm is always stronger because I'm single-handed backhand, and, and yeah. I always play just with my right. My left feels uh, completely alien to me with a tennis racket. So when I um, when I when I play now, I'm trying to involve it a little bit more. But uh, in the gym, certainly use both. But it, it also depends, you know, on the tennis court if if you're using a sing, single hander or two hander. I love the next question. How many rackets have you broken during a pro match? I'd say I've never broken more than one. I've broken one like a few times, yeah. but then after I break, like it's always the moment of, okay, I, I'm so angry and I snap it, but then after I do it, literally 10 seconds after, I feel like complete idiot, wow. you know? So for me, it's, uh, I always get... Uh, I've, broken, so, yeah. I've broken two in a match and I got disqualified. Oh, yeah. That's another tell tool. from the tour. That's a tell from the tour. <laughs> Played six matches in three days, two matches in pre-qualifying, Three matches in qualifying, main draw match. I was playing a guy from Davis Cup team from uh, Latvia. It was a set all. He broke me to go one love up. It was my seventh match in four days, and I was completely physically gone. I snapped my frame. Umpire gave the other guy a couple of points, or a point, or a game. Then I snapped the second one, disqualified. <laughs> so I felt. Pretty stupid after that. Is Peter gone? I think so. I'd say on a single hander, if if they are kicking it high, you go four. Yeah, yeah, and we actually did a video on this. Yeah, we did. Um, is it in the course or is it on? It's um, it's for the, the members section of our free site, but it hasn't been uploaded yet. Yeah, so we'll we'll put it up on the website. Um, so you have to sign up to it to view. But we we do have so you have four options. You can either come in slice, you can try and take it on with a hit. Or you, drive can, it. you can drive it, you can go back, push back, you know, so by pushing back, you need to get the height and the depth back because otherwise you're going to be hitting the ball short. And so mostly you, cross court. Yeah, you need to go cross, high and deep. On the deep one, I mean. Yeah. And then the fourth option is inside out or inside in forehand. Yeah, so you actually take away that option and try and uh, hit a forehand. And almost, if you stand in that corner, if you, if you start moving more to the left uh, and, and, and show your opponent that you're going to be taking the forehand, they might struggle to find the backhand and they might start going into your forehand and, and stop giving you the backhand. And if they do go there, you just remain in that position and you start hitting forehands and it sends a real message out to your opponent and it makes them double fault quite a lot, I find. Favorite tennis ball? I like Wilson US Opens. Also like Wimbledon balls. They're, yeah. They last yeah. quite, they don't last too long though. They last normally just a week or two to pressure. I find Dunlops are really heavy. Dunlops are heavy and they're pretty painful on my, uh, on my wrist when I coach yeah, with them. Yeah. Uh, head ATP. Uh, head ATP is not too bad. It's a, decent ball. It's a good ball. It's a good well. ball for me. I, I quite like the Babolat balls. They're good. They're fast. Fast and yeah, pretty pretty decent. Yeah. Uh, Tretons, t t terribly bouncy. You, Pen, you, too bouncy. You'd avoid them. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Mario. Mario, thank you. Rock, paper, scissors. Well, fuzzy yellow balls done a whole video about Djokovic, uh, Nadal, and Federer. It's, it's tough. I think some players know that they basically have such a good team around them that they know how to, they basically watch the players, other players' matches and know how to beat 
most of the opponents that they play. Yeah, I mean, there are obviously different tactics you can use in it to play different opponents. And we actually did a course on this. It's called the Tactics Blueprint. Uh, you can find it on our site, and it talks all about the different styles of players that are out there and, 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 and how to be all the different styles. So how, how to check it out. Thank you as well, Joe. What the problem? If I start when I surf, Oof. I mean, it could be a flexibility thing. So I'd say you have to do a lot of flexibility exercises, stretching, because uh, being ten playing a lot of tennis, it tightens up your right shoulder. Um, if you, a good test to do, if you want to lock your arms behind your back, you'll be able to go further on one side than the, than the other, and that's a good test to see if you're flexible enough, especially in your rotator cuff. I'd say doing a lot of those and uh, and doing some exercises to um, to, 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 to balance out the, the, the any instabilities with the rubber band. Any good drills to hit with more topspin? Uh, neck clearance. Yeah, you can. You like can that yeah, drill. yeah, you can put like a high. You can almost high put a net. high net. You know, put a put a a, a badminton net on the court, um, and then and try, try to hit over that. that. Yeah. Next Peter video will come out <laughs> with one of those. <laughs> Videos and hitting the high back and smash, please. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. a good one. I actually could do that quite well. Tim Henman used to do it yeah. well, so I loved he, it. He that was my well. Yeah. And uh, Pat Rafter. Rafter. Federer does it well. Yeah, Federer does it well too. Okay, we're going to do another five minutes and of this gonna, video and then yeah. we're going to go to sleep because it's. Four, Four in the morning. We said we're going to go from two till three. We stayed on for a bit longer for you guys, uh, but soon we shall call it uh, a night in five minutes. So if you need anything else answered, then uh, let us know. What kind of thing should I do at the gym to help out my game? Depends your game. Also, you want to be a cardio, a bit of interval training. So yeah. sprint, like 15 second sprint, 15 seconds slow or 15 seconds, 20 seconds sprint, 20 seconds off, mm. um, resistance bands. I'd say I'd say someone like uh, Murray, I know he does, uh, you start with 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off, and then you can go for 40 seconds on, 20 seconds off for longer points, uh, and then you start to add a little bit of, or that's for, um, for your cardio, and then you start to add a bit of elevation. So if you're doing on a running machine, do it a little bit uphill, and then you'll be able to see how much more difficult it is, and you start to use your butt muscles a lot more. You want to work a lot on your legs, so a lot yeah. of stability exercises for your legs and balance exercises, like lunges, things like that, because um, that's obviously when you're on the stretch, you want to be strong in those positions. Thank you as well. Thanks, guys. Thanks for the support. Uh, always, you know, willing to hear what your what your thoughts are and everything. Yeah. And uh, how to grow the channel. Read any good books lately? Reading is good for the soul. What was the last one I read? Ah, oh, I read an interesting one called Illusions. It just takes your mind out a little bit, and uh, it's all about um, like just changes your outlook on life a little. I, I recommend the Illusions. It's Illusions. A it's a short book, but it's uh, highly recommended. Last book I read was Agassi's uh, autobiography. That was last I think last year or the year before. I haven't been reading last. I used to read a lot, but now with the website, too busy, just building videos, pages. <laughs> Yeah, and reading like tennis material to yeah. to, to, reading, know, to see how, how we can improve uh, yeah. our coaching. Another good one to read up would be how to use um, some uh, the webinar software. <laughs> Would you guys discuss PEDs? Completely understand if not. I've wrote a whole article about it. Would tennis players benefit from doping? And tennis players are the only pl the, the people at the top. They know what's going on. I have no idea. Alex. He yeah, has no I'm, idea. Yeah, I mean, it's I, personally, I never dealt with it. Like, I, I've never been approached, and I've never 
seen it happen in changing rooms or anything yeah. like that. There's always rumors, yeah. but I don't know whether it's rumors of jealous people who are complaining that someone else is stronger than them. So it's, yeah. it's a tough one. You know, even, even the guys who are considered to be complete animals and how is it superhuman when you speak to people who are close to them, well, or know them a little better, they, all of them would say this is complete nonsense. So it's it's a tough one, but it's a tough it one. happens in so many sports. I'd be yeah. surprised if, if it was tennis clean. was super clean. So there's, it definitely happens. Uh, you know, on what uh, on what, what level, level? Who knows? You know, that's 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 a tough one. I don't think we're going to get into uh, into that one today. Yeah. Why do you think haters think Nadal did steroids? The the whole thing with Nadal started when he was about. 15, 16, he was playing futures already. And a lot of guys I met, they said at 15, at 14, 15, he was quite small. He was he, he went through a growth spurt and then he ended up at 16 turning into this huge man. And it happened over the course of one year. And that was the whole thing where, where the steroids came in, I think. Yeah, a lot of the times the the... It's tough to monitor, you know, when at a young age, uh, what you know, what the players what are thinking. doing, because obviously, it, that's when I, testosterone I, kicks in. I, actually, I think now, uh, I'd I'd be very surprised if a lot of players like at the very top of you. I know that um, someone like Ferrer gets tested a lot, you know, and uh, he he said that you know it'd be impossible for Nadal or anyone like that to be on steroids just because you get tested so much, even overly much. But it, does it get covered up? It yeah. could be, you know, it could do. Who knows? They, only the, the guys at the top really know. I train four to five days a week, two sessions a day. Every day feels really different. Like, for example, maybe different parts of my first time. For me, I'd say. Yeah. 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 Every day 100%. is different. You come, you you play. Every yeah. every day is different. So you you know you just got to start from the scratch. Yeah, every you start day. And, and almost accept that that's you know it's part of tennis. Yeah. You know, if you ask any of the top guys, they play well. Uh, you know, three times a year, and all the other times you're dealing with a you know a dodgy backhand, uh, a misguided forehand, and a serve that doesn't go into the court when you want it. So it's uh, you just have to deal with what you've got on the day, uh, yeah. and and find and as a good player, you'll find solutions to that. So yeah. you'll. Uh, you know, hopefully your tactics will be good enough to, to either to protect it, around. change yeah. it, or, or find another way of winning the match. Yeah. All right, guys, last two questions we're going to answer. Yeah. Should be. <laughs> What's your favorite surface to play on? Me, Clay, slow Clay, I love. <laughs> uh. Yeah. yeah, I used to. Uh, I used to love only fast surfaces. I only used to play indoors and hard fast. Uh, and I used to like. I, I had some really good wins on grass. Like I, I, I beat uh, Jules Muller on grass, which was a big win for me at the time. Now he's, you know, he's he did well this year. Yeah, he, Australian he, Open. He, yeah, he got four five five. Yeah, uh, he was like forty in the world. So, I, I, you know, I always played well on grass just because I think it uh, it suits my game quite a lot. But then when I went to Spain, I tried to adapt my game to to be a more you know suitable to clay as well so i wanted to be more of an all-rounder so that's something that I, I had to learn strings i play with black widow you play with i play rpm blast uh Babylon. was this night your worst tennis nightmare uh not tennis nightmare but <laughs> for our channel yes <laughs> yeah it wasn't a great start but yeah hey, we got it we got yeah, it working we got it end. working in the end what is your advice on how to stay calm during a match and not get mad? Breathing, breathing exercises. A lot of people say, you know, how do I not get mad? I think sometimes it's okay to get mad and you yeah. should be like, you know what, I, I'm okay. it's okay to get mad and scream out, but make sure it doesn't come, 
calm down, calm right down, you know, make yeah. sure it doesn't carry over to the next point because the worst thing you want is playing the next point still angry, you know, so yeah. whatever it takes to get yourself out of that, you know, you have to do. Obviously, try not smash too many rackets, but yeah. uh, I'd say, you know, every so often, even the best players, they scream out, you know, it's tough to hold it all in all the time. So Linko and RPM represent. Uh -huh. <laughs> you guys did great. Thanks, Peter. Thanks, Pete. Thank you, guys. We're going to end it right there. Yeah. Uh, keep tuned to our channel. Um, Thank you for the suggestions. We're going to work on them. Yeah. Uh, leave some, you know, comments on the videos, like, dislike, share our videos, you know. Yeah. So one of our... The things is if you know if you share it on your Facebook or to your friends, the more people that get to see us, the better for us, uh, and the more content we'll be able to uh, bring out for you yeah. guys as well. So, uh, you know, you certainly do that for us, and we'll be uh, very grateful. Okay, thank you guys. Thank you guys. That's a wrap. <laughs>